First, before we do this, I'd like to thank Max Stats. Uh, he suggested I do this kind of video to show people how to uh, read brainwaves and stuff like that, and what it all means, which definitely makes sense. And I'd like to thank Max Stats for helping me keep it simple. I mean, this is simply Deo. Thank you again. Okay, first we're gonna talk about possible, like how to read it, read brain waves, and then we'll talk about what each brain wave represents. Um, first off, when you're reading brain waves, kind of like anything in science, you're looking for repetition and basically patterns establishing, and this is basically how research came to came about with these these characteristics of each brain wave, and it is continuously growing. But uh, a lot of times, like if you see a strong force of it, that usually means that it's for that case. But do remember, if it only is every once in a while, but it's happening usually on the same when the same stuff is happening, kind of like when we were talking with previous videos of theta waves, kind of showing uh, almost emotional balancing, uh, rebalancing. You know, it wouldn't be a con constant. Th thing like you'd see when we're listening or reading or doing something where you'd see a lot of gamma waves and that's a cons big consistent thing in a small s small uh, moment over time where this is you know a small moment happening consistently over you know the whole episode but so you're kind of looking for those two types of ways i mean it's kind of like a standard thing with you know i mean psychology price you know just science in general just looking at patterns and seeing if it holds true okay first up let's look at the delta waves so these happen between 0 0.1 and 4 hertz and that hertz usually is usually is the measurement of in, within one second how many times you see like the wave thing like if you ever look at brainwave patterns and I'll have a you know you'll see images throughout this whole video of each brainwave when it like kind of arcs like that and you know it basically how many brain how many of those you see within one second so for delta it's when it's 0 0.1 to 4 hertz four of them so is how many times you would see that within one second so in the delta state this is usually deep dreamless sleep uh, usually begins stage three of sleep uh, you have 50 percent delta wave activity stage four more than 50 percent delta wave activity um, interestingly enough uh, women do tend to have more delta wave activity and that's usually true across most mammals but uh, it become and it becomes uh, that that does become more apparent in early adulthood, kind of 30s and 40s in humans. But for what we're doing this for, you know, gaming wise, probably not going to see too much of that. But I will stress this at the very end: it is important to note, even if I'm saying we're not going to see too much of it, that doesn't mean we're not going to see any of it. Because no matter what, even though there's a stronger force in certain things. Brain, brain, all these brain waves are happening at all the all the time. It's just not the predominant one. Let's now take a look at the theta brain wave, and that one usually occurs between four and eight hertz. So once again, that's how many times you see that the waves in one second intervals. So there are. Just so you guys know, there are two types, uh, the hippocampal theta rhythms, they're called, and they're observed, surprisingly enough, in the hippocampus, which is really far into your brain, which that's not anything we're going to see here, because that usually requires, um, like, actually putting pro elect electrodes and probes into the brain, and not quite there for what we're using it for but the other one cortical theta rhythms they're recorded from the scalp or you know any any basically any of those 
EEG devices like you know the one we have where it's recording on the surface of the head. Uh, but that the important thing from that one, unlike the hippocampal one that's only coming from the hippocampus, this is regardless of any source. So it's coming from anywhere in the brain. Uh, the theta waves are more frequent in young children. Uh, in older children and adults, it's usually more for meditative, drowsy, hypnotic sleeping states. But not during the deepest stages of sleep. That's back to the, de the delta. Uh, you can also see it in daydreaming. So think about... Uh, Basically, tasks that become so regular you disengage from them. Um, maybe your morning morning routine, like brushing your teeth, brushing your hair, showering. Can you guys truly remember the those events, or is it you're just going through the motions? Like that's so that's when theta kind of takes over. And also, you know, I'm sure this has happened once or twice to everybody, but like when you, maybe you're doing freeway driving, like maybe you have to drive on a freeway to work and it's one of those freeways where you really don't see anything around you. There's like no change in scenery. You're just watching the road and long and, and all of a sudden you start realizing, I, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't remember the last like five miles or, you know, however long, like you feel like I couldn't recall anything from that. That's also the theta. That's basically, it's basically daydreaming. And apart from like, let's use the freeway example or the driving example, apart from maybe like country where you'll see like different houses or, you know, farm animals or, you know, different things or even city driving where that would probably, and we'll get to this later, since it's changing in surroundings, you'd be more alert. That's more beta stuff. But like I said, theta is like your daydreaming state. Also, some, res some new newer research is suggesting, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, that uh, it could also be used as a rebalancing of uh, emotions. So kind of bring it, you back down to the norm, which kind of shows off with the meditative states, um, kind of getting you, you know, back into, you know, your, nor your normal line of emotional state. But it, like I said, these theta has a stronger uh, frequency in hyp hypnosis, um, and like I said, in normal state emotional states returning. And like I said, we're going to be re recording it from the scalp, just so everybody knows. In the alpha brain waves, these are from eight eight to fourteen hertz. So once again. Can see how this is all still in one second interval, but a lot more is going to have to happen. So eight of those quick, you know, let's just call them the quick squigglies. Uh, you're going to have to see eight to fourteen of those. So it's you know your brain your brain's firing off more. Um, so in the alpha state, it uh, originates mostly from the occipital lobe and during wake, wakeful relaxation with closed eyes. But also, it's similar to Theta with the meditative-like states. Not much info is processing. A good way to look at it is, say if you're really tensely working on something, uh, maybe it was schoolwork or, you know, work, you wanted to get done f with work, maybe you got off a really horrible business call or something, and you just have to take a second and maybe you, like, go walk outside or you know, so stressed where you're like, I just need to take a moment, just go and walk, like just clear, like kind of clear your mind. This is the alpha state. Like when you're going for that walk or when you're kind of just recuperating mentally that, that little for that time. So that's a good way to think about it. Uh, research is trying to make it so people can like train people to harness this and go to this a lot easier because if you think about it it could help people overcome phobias overcome once again like I said high stress situations and conditions so hopefully one day we'll find better methods of 
you know, easily access in the alpha state because it is hard for a lot of people. And next up is the beta waves. So this happens be in once again in one second, 14 to 30 times. So one, like I said, this is getting more hectic, which you'll be able to see why. Um, this is the wide awake stage. This is basically how people are mostly, you know, going through their day. It's where you your brain waves for alertness, uh, active concentration. Uh, like active, busy, or anxious thinking in higher levels of beta. So when you're getting close, you know, as you get closer to the 30 hertz mark, uh, this is where anxiety and fear and stress comes in, which we were talking about in the alpha stage. You know, this is where, you know, like I said, anxiety, fear, stress. This is also where phobias probably like start working you up and getting you concerned. Um, also, you can see it in. Uh, if you're ever exercising or working out, muscle contractions will release beta waves. So uh, the the specific ones are the isotonic contractions, and that sounds complicated, but think of it this way: it's basically isotonic contractions are tension that remains unchanged, so basically the same weight, and the muscle length changes. So the simplest way. Like I, as I was doing this motion, think of like bicep curls. You're still like, if you're holding a 20 pound weight, it's still that 20 pound weight, but your muscles are moving. Unlike the other type, which would be like, say if you have a glass of water and then you start filling it. Well, you're not gonna, you're not really gonna move your hand cause you're gonna miss the glass of water. You know, you're gonna spill water. You're keeping your, muscles muscle length the same but the tension changing that's not where beta is beta is basically bicep curls so when you're in when you're in the gym or wherever you are when you're weight training weight lifting think of it as working out your body but you're also working out your mind you're shooting off some beta waves and also you can also see it is when movement has to be resisted or voluntarily suppressed so, like I said, that's where you can see a lot of the stuff there, like voluntarily suppressed, like um, some of those games out there where it's like, especially with like the PS4 when they came out with the motion controller, you know, you're like, don't move the controller. And it's like, uh, you know, you're like, all I want to do is move the controller now. So that's probably with the beta waves flaring off. And last but not least, we have the gamma waves. So this is 30 plus hertz. So this is happening, you know, 30, at least 30 times within the second. Like, so, and, you know, I know that sounds like, because I said 14 to 30 in the beta, it's basically like 30.1 technically, but, you know, you'll probably see it at 31 plus. Um... But so, you know, this is where the brain is firing a lot at a lot, uh, a lot of the time. So in the gamma, you're seeing formation of ideas. This is, this is basically where like higher level thinking is recurring. Uh, language, uh, memory processing, and just overall consciousness, consciousness. But it is interesting. This is probably one of the newest brain waves for a long time. People thought that after beta like it was just it was just all beta from then on though there was a distinction later on so a lot of people may this might be a controversial point for depending on where they learned you know where beliefs fall but it is a it is a recognized beta wave it is in our program so you know here here it is but this is where you're going to see higher level thinking like i said language basically communication stuff like that and rec taking things to memory recalling it and you know like that's why i like to stream with it is like if i'm talking to someone you also see the gamma put spiking but remember overall i do want to say when you're seeing these things 
and that's why you see on these uh, NeuroSky headset it like kind of shooting all over it's because not while one might be dominant all these brain waves are happening at the same time this makes up your brain but one takes o precedent over the other depending on what you're doing that's the important thing to realize so once again thank you for watching this once again thank you to uh, Max Stats for recommending this and helping me keep it simple um, now there is more to these brain waves but these are um, the most pertinent things for uh, what we're doing so if you're in the comment about to be in the comments saying you know there's more to like that's why I didn't really get into the different contra muscle contractions for beta waves it's just there's so there's so much to all this stuff for us just reading and personality wise you know that's what we're using it for so uh, I thank you all for watching um, hopefully this will inspire you guys to uh, leave some comments on for Brainy Bits weekly episodes I wanted to do this in place of since it's over the holidays get to relax a little bit but now I give you guys the tool to make it a little bit easier so I thank you all and hopefully see everybody next time. If you want to be a part of the next Brainy Bits episode, just go to any of the episodes on this channel that come out next week and leave a comment with at least a timestamp and title, or you can use Twitch Clips feature to tweet at me with a title and you could show up in next week's Brainy Bits. And don't worry, even if it's a video where I'm not, I don't have the EEG device on, or the brainwave device, we can also speculate on what those brainwaves could have been. So either way, if you see a cool moment, um, just tweet it at me or put it in the comment section if it's of that video. And most importantly, I'd like to thank everybody for watching this, watching all the other episodes. Um, if you want to help me out, like, favorite, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Twitch. Um, also tune in live on Twitch when I do these or other things. And I will love to see everybody next time. See ya.